Okay, we're live. Oh, okay. Mm. Should be. We are. I see it. Oh, okay. Gosh, this thing is on such a delay, isn't it? Hmm. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, Amber. Um, I sent you a chat. Oh, wait, I don't know if the chat comes up. Never mind, I won't send you a chat. Okay, I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. What's wrong? I just, I just uh, saw that it posted as 307 and not 309. I will change that. I just don't know how to edit it. I don't know if it'll let me. Uh, we might can edit it after it posts, the video posts. Okay. <laughs> House arrest. I don't know what it is. Double take. Oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, maybe it won't. Okay, well, we'll just have to edit that out later. <laughs> Wally, I'm going to hope you're talking to me and not Banks. What do you say? I'm not even going to say it out loud. You'll just have to read that. Because I think he's talking to you. Me? Mm-hmm. All right. What do you say? You're just going to have to see it. I don't see no comments. Oh, here we go. I love you, sexy mama. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Okay. Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks, broadcasting from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank Cuff with Adam Banks, or you could download the Radio Lex app on your smartphone device. This is House Arrest Series Volume 5. I am social distancing. I'm at my house. Amber Turner is at her house joining me via Zoom. Amber, we are now, what, week six, week seven into this? I don't know if it's been that long, but I think we have been a good four and a half, five weeks into this. Okay, let's think about it. We were on the air on March the 12th when this broke off, when the March Madness thing got canceled, when the NBA got canceled. That was March the 12th. So we're now uh, April 21st. So how many weeks is that? About four. About four about weeks? Four. Yeah, about four weeks. I think I think it's been, um, I think we might have been out of the studio a total of five weeks. Okay. And it's not the 21st, it's the 23rd, I'm sorry. Thursday, April the 23rd. I'm very sorry about that. And I will tell you this, though. Maybe it just seems like it has been longer than four weeks because I don't know about you, but it's really starting to to bother me. I don't like being stuck at home. Are you getting a little stir crazy? I'm getting bored. I really am. There's nothing to do. And I'm patiently waiting for the economy to open back up just like everybody else. Oh, I'm yeah. patiently waiting for things just to, something to open, something to remind me of the old normal. I want it, whether it be a restaurant to open up or whether it be the haircutting places to open up. I need something. <laughs> is that going to be the first place you go is to get a haircut? I need one. I really do. I mean, at this point, I'm letting everything grow. What do you think of the beard? I, you know, I, I think it looks, I like it. My corn. I think it looks beard. nice. It's different. You know me, I've experimented with my hair and my facial hair pretty much my entire life. Not really facial hair because I really couldn't grow much when I was younger. So now I'm really starting to just let it grow because I actually can grow it just a little bit. Yeah. But what I like about facial hair, it's you can get rid of it. Mm -hmm. tattoos i've never been a tattoo guy never really been a piercing guy but tattoos you can't get rid of no and i'm that's too much of a commitment for me tattoo that's too permanent that's too forever facial hair if it don't look good you can shave it off yep and it's all good i I enjoy it though i mean it's you have to get over that itchy itchy phase of it yet and all the men out there know what i'm talking about when you first start growing your facial hair out you get this really itchy phase going on yeah. And it's once you get past that, it comes fluffy. It becomes a little bit fluffier. Okay. I like, I'm, I'm so curious. Like, how do you guys wash those things? I honestly put conditioner in mind. I don't know if that's what other men do, but I put conditioner in mind because it makes it softer. And to me, it, to me, it just makes sense to make your hair softer on your face well yeah so when you like finally do decide that you're gonna shave like does it kind of freak you out when you see yourself the first time after you've like it's a change let it grow for a while it's definitely a change you've seen videos of people going around on facebook you've seen it before of these men that have had beards uh, for years and they shave and they let their kids see them for Mm -hmm. the first time and the kids they start crying they start freaking out because of what they're seeing they don't it's like a totally different face. And it's like that for us too. I look in the mirror right now. I'm used to this look. Mm -hmm. If I was to shave and look in the mirror, it's going to take me back just a minute. It's going to make me take a double tape being like, Oh, is that me? I I mean, I can understand that. I mean, I guess as women, we maybe get that when we cut our hair. (laughs) I was about to say, I thought you were going to say us as women, when we get our facial hair, we kind of do the same thing. I mean, I do look like I have a five o'clock shadow. I think my lighting's just not good tonight. (laughs) What age is it, though, that women do start getting facial hair? Because I know that's a thing because I've seen it. Oh, it it. is so a thing. It is a thing. I will be the first woman to raise my hand and say, I get it. I get a little something every now and again. (laughs) Really? Yes. What do you do? You just pluck it out? I do. And, you know, I I spent the bulk of my life making fun of my grandmother because I would always see her plucking at her face. 
and now I find myself plucking at my face uh but I think it's just something that just kind of happens naturally as you get older yeah I that I couldn't think of anything more mortifying as a female as to wake up and have facial hair on my face because I've seen women god bless their heart I'm not making fun of them but I've seen women before that they've had full man shoes right on their face and I'm like oh that's that's got to be rough to deal with internally oh it has to be I mean I I can remember like feeling very 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 upset when I found my first like one and then I'll see some women who you know unfortunately a lot of it is you know there are medical conditions that cause that uh, hormone imbalances that cause that but it is absolutely the worst thing to deal with well, Amber, we are social distancing, and we are really starting to feel the effects of it. I've learned through all of this, this being House Arrest Series Volume 5, we've done five episodes outside of the studio. I've learned that being on the radio isn't all about being in a studio. Being on the radio is broadcasting from other places outside of the studio. You can well, That's what I like about radio. You can broadcast from anywhere. It does not have to be from your home base it does not have to be from the studio. And before that really bothered me that we was broadcasting from home because I was like the content might go down a little, the quality might go down a little, but it's not, it's not about the studio. The studio doesn't make the show. No, it doesn't. The, the listeners, the airwaves, the fan base, whether it's on Facebook live, whether it's on the radio airwaves, that's what makes the show. So I've learned that just in this last five weeks of this quarantine. So I have taken that away as a broadcaster. (laughs) <laughs> but also, Amber, speaking of getting things back to normal, Andy Bashir has announced some phases that we must go through before things get back to normal. And that's what I want to start off the show with. I guess we started off the show on a topic that I didn't intend, facial hair. But let's move on to some more important things. Andy Bashir okay. was talking about getting things back to normal. And before we do that, uh, we, have to, we have to do some things. Uh, In order to move to phase one, before we even get to phase one, Amber, we have to meet these following conditions. We have to have 14 days where where cases are decreasing. Okay. So 14 days in a row where the cases are decreasing. Increased testing capacity and contact tracing. Okay. Personal protective equipment availability. Ability to protect at-risk populations. Ability to social distance and follow Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines on large gatherings, preparedness for possible future spike, and the statues of vaccine and treatment, which I think we have been making progress to achieve all of these. And I think that a lot of this is just kind of, it's putting it on us. It's putting it on the people. Make sure that you keep doing the thing. So we have pretty much are going to hit phase one. We're going to get to 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 go through phase one so people are asking when is phase one supposed to happen sometime within mid-may is when he's anticipating so april 30th sometime i think every day after april 30th the people are going to become more and more frustrated with staying at home i know we're still i mean i'm not here to say that it's not protecting people's lives but people are ready to to leave the house and the economy it needs to open back up too. Uh, let's not sugarcoat that. But phase one, here's what happens with phase one. Here's what we can do with phase one. Okay. Individuals need to continue to practice good hygiene. People okay. who feel sick should stay home. All vulnerable individuals should continue to shelter in place. All individuals when in public should maximize physical distance from others. All individuals should avoid large gatherings of more than 10 people. So you should you can see there that there's some difference in the normalcy. Oh, well, I think the only thing that really should be a variance is the 10 people, but we should have kind of always been doing the other stuff. Always be. Yeah. So for the employers, uh, they should still continue to encourage telework during phase one. If possible, the governor saying they should return to work, though, uh, close common areas minimize non-essential travel and adhere to CDC guidelines, strongly consider special accommodations for personnel who are members of a vulnerable population, schools and organized youth activities that are currently closed should remain closed, visits to senior leaving facilities and hospitals should still be prohibited, large venues, sit-down dining, movie theaters, sporting venues, places of worship can operate under strict physical distancing protocols. Gyms can reopen too, 
if they okay. adhere if they adhere to the strict physical uh, distancing and bars should also remain closed. So that's what's supposed to happen if we if we make it to phase one, which we probably ninety nine percent chance that we'll make it to phase one. I would say. I'm gonna so, hope you're right. Yeah, but that's what we can do now. Phase two and three. That's a little bit more down the road. Uh, I'm gonna post phase two and three. Amber on the facebook.com with Adam Banks off the cuff with Adam Banks okay. on Facebook. So people can uh, take a look at what phase two and three is. And I might go over that next week on the show because uh, we're not even close to phase two or three yet. So there's no point of even talking about it because for those who are sitting around waiting for a, just a big boom of things to go back to normal, that's not going to happen. It's going to happen in phases. And the first thing we got to go through first is phase one, and that's going to last a long time. So everything I just said that's going to happen in phase one is what we're going to get to enjoy. But phase two and three, that's when the non-essential travel, that's when the reopening of schools, that's when the big stuff, like places like churches can operate without any restrictions. That's when the big stuff starts happening, phase two and three. Okay. So I'll post a complete list of that on Off the Cuff uh, with Adam Banks' Facebook page, and we'll go over phases two and three. Uh, next week but amber we have a big episode today i'm very excited to have on the show he's going to be joining us in the third segment dan Polly. he is the host of friends in the corner podcast i've been friends with dan for a couple of years uh he even credits just a tad i don't know i'll have to ask him about it he credits starting his podcast a little bit to me and i'll have to ask him about it i'll have to ask him I, I could i could be dead wrong but i'm gonna ask him about it when he comes on i'm gonna ask him about it when he comes on hey that's what i do that's what that's what i do amber i just inspire people i'm a trailblazer that's what it is but he's going to be joining us in the third segment and we've got a lot to talk uh to uh dan about uh of course everybody knows that howard finkel from the world wrestling federation passed away i'm very sad and we'll talk about that I want to talk about that Michael Jordan documentary with him. That's we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about his show as well and do some cross promotion. But we got a big show here today. So everybody stick around. We got lots more of off the cup coming up after these words. Stick with us. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also joining me at her house. I'm at mine. We are doing this show via Zoom. We are social distancing because this is our House Arrest Series, Volume 5. We've been doing this now for the past five episodes where I've been doing the show from my house. Amber's been broadcasting from hers in an effort to keep the social distance. Amber, so many changes happen every single week. Since this started, that's pretty much all we've talked about. Oh, and yeah. It's the 2020 has become the coronavirus year. And everybody was so pumped for 2022, wasn't they? I Ever? know. I think we both went into it with very high hopes it was going to be a great year. Well, 2019 was just so great. Everything, just the show took off. Uh, my career took off. Things just started happening. And then the momentum, you talk about just crushing the momentum. This COVID-19 came in and went bam, right in my face. No, don't think of it like that. Just think of it as um, you've learned alter uh, alternative platforms. I have. And you, I try to learn from every situation that I'm in. And I've taken away a lot from this uh, coronavirus. For instance, I wouldn't have really cared to ever experiment outside of our broadcasting equipment, like, like our regular studio equipment. And now yeah. I'm comfortable with using this. So I try to learn from every single situation, but so many new things are developing every week. Amber, this past Monday, Bashir 
officially closed the schools. He says that schools are not going to reopen for the rest of the year. We kind of seen this coming. We knew this was probably going to happen because he shut down the school system until April 30th. And seeing is that usually there's only a month left of schools anyway, he went ahead and shut it down. I feel really bad for those seniors. I do. Because you remember what it was like being a senior. There was nothing like those last couple weeks of school. Oh, yes. Nothing like it. And for everybody, there was nothing like that last day of school. The last day of school was always so cool, regardless of what grade you were in. But it was especially nice when we were graduating high school. <laughs> I mean, you're absolutely right. Everything tasted better, smelt better. You liked better. everybody a little more. You liked everybody on the last day of school. It was it was uh, the real deal. Though, if you could bottle that feeling up, it's a great feeling. Those people won't have that. I have a little cousin who is a senior in high school. She's missing out on all the festivities. And I didn't realize that she was a senior until – we were talking through that house party app. Have you, have you used that? Uh, no, I think I downloaded it to play a board game and then I just didn't get to it. Yeah. We were, um, talking through that and I didn't realize that she was a senior until we were talking on that. And I was like, I'm really sorry that you're missing your prom and your graduation and your, and, and the last days of your, of your school year, the senior skip day was also a fun day. Did you do senior skip day? Um, I did, but I think I kind of done my own thing. What did you do? I think I stayed in the the city that I lived in at the time, and I think I just kind of hung out there and like went to Walmart. I mean, we're from we're from Eastern Kentucky. There wasn't much we could do. There's not. I think a lot of people go to the ropes at the lake back home. I never did it. I went to Loretta Lynn's house on my senior skip day. I did. I went and went to Butcher Holler and took a tour of Loretta Lynn's house. You might be from Eastern Kentucky if you go to Loretta Lynn's house on your senior skip day. I was going to say, I did not know you went to Loretta Lynn's house on (laughs) on senior skip day. I I feel less bad about myself now. I did, and that was an amazing experience because her brother, Loretta Lynn's brother, think about this. Loretta Mm -hmm. Lynn is a country icon, right? Mm -hmm. She is a legend. That movie, Coal Miner's Daughter, it's a great movie. She is a legend. Her brother, Flesh and Blood, walked out of his double wide and yeah. he said hey he said i'll give you a tour and her brother gave me the tour of their house that they grew up in in butcher holler this is loretta lynn a living legend's brother talking about growing up with his sissy in butcher Holler, yeah. and he was showing me the rooms and the and well the room that they grew up in i was gonna say room yeah and just how small that house was and he was like, yeah. I was like, well, why don't you ever go on tour with Loretta or visit her? He said, yeah, she tries to get me to all the time, but I got to stay home and feed my dogs. And I was like, man, these are just good old country folk. But what you see is what you get with Loretta Lynn. Yeah. yeah She's that, always been like that. Yeah. She always, I mean, she, she is country personified. Oh, what is it? Yeah, you can take the girl out of the hills, but you can't take the hills out of the girl. I think that was kind of made about her. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think it was, but that's what I did on senior skip day. Uh, those seniors, you're not, they're not going to get to experience it. They're not going to get to say goodbye to their friends. That's hard too. They're not even, they're not going to get closure and they're not going to get that last, that last goodbye. They're not going to get to confess their love to their crush before they leave. And there are people that I can honestly sit here and say, I have not seen since the night we graduated. Same. There's a lot of people that I haven't seen since I walked out of the doors of my high school in 2006, and I could only imagine how these seniors are feeling with this abrupt ending to their school year, missing all of those things. They'll never get to talk about that as a memory. No. Prom, even if they have a prom at this point, it would definitely... It's, it's already tainted because they had to have it at an alternative venue probably at a different time. Exactly. It sucks. Oh, all of this sucks. I'm stressing out. I really am. I, you know, so when, when you sit at home a lot, you think <laughs> constantly. Your oh, mind yeah. is constantly just rocking and a rolling because you're just nothing else to do. And you start thinking about, oh, my gosh, what if I get laid off? What if I lose my job? What if I can't pay my bills? What if I end up under a bridge because I can't pay my bills? All of this stuff. I know I'm sharing some of these fears with somebody. 
Oh, you're definitely sharing them with me because, you know, I cry about that all the time <laughs> in normal circumstances. I just need to get out of this house. I feel locked up. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take song of the, the off the cuff song of the week break. Speaking of locked up, we got a little Akon playing locked up. We'll be back after the song. Akon used to be really, really popular when I was a freshman in college. Do you remember that? I remember you were a huge Akon fan. <laughs> and that was the first thing I thought about when you said that was going to be the song of the week. Because, guys, he doesn't tell me what the song of the week is going to be. I hear it usually with you guys. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was judging you just a little bit through that whole song. <laughs> it's a good song. That's the great song, Akon. He had some bangers back in the day. All right, Amber, we were talking about schools being canceled, meaning a lot of parents now have to turn into teachers. They have to homeschool their kids. Whew, I couldn't imagine being homeschooled. I, I always wondered what that was like for kids to be homeschooled. I always liked the idea when I was a kid because, oh, that's cool. Get to stay home all day. No. But until you do it, I'm sure it's a little different. But I know no. a lot of parents are going crazy. A lot of parents are probably pulling their hair out because they like to have that break from their kids seven hours a day oh yeah so, but here at off the cuff i'm going to give you some tips on homeschooling your kids i'm going to give you uh some things that you might not have even thought of but now that kids are officially out you know that you're going to have to continue to homeschool your kids so here's what you can do first thing you need to recognize that homeschool is not school there is a difference. Build an atmosphere for learning because you're not going to have that regular atmosphere that you normally have at school. Um, there's a lot of distractions. Try to take it away. Just like folks working from home, it's the same way for kids. Uh, reward them for letting them do – reward them. Let them do fun things around the house if they do their work. Let them watch a little daytime TV. Let them watch a little, a little, Maury. little Maury Povich okay. if they have to. Make a schedule is another thing you need to do. Uh, you don't have to make them wake up at the crack of dawn like normal. Let them sleep in, but keep them on a strict maybe four-hour, five-hour work day where they do nothing but school work. Um, give them healthy breaks and things, but keep them on a schedule. Acknowledge that the kids have different needs. All your kids, and I'm talking to parents that have more than one kid, uh, know that all your kids have different learning styles. As a college professor, I know that all the students that I teach have different learning styles. So I know that all these little youngins out here have different learning styles too. So be patient and teach each kid different, not the same. Uh, build a little recess. You can be creative with your recess if you want. When I say be creative, go outside, take a walk in the woods, a walk in the woods is healthy for everybody. It puts your soul in a good mood. I don't know. Look around. Look at the plants. See what plants are growing. What bugs you can find. Uh, what what kind of rocks are laying around. Look how the sun looks in the sky. Think of things creatively that you can do at home during recess that's still educational. Did you and come up with that list? I did. <laughs> okay. I was really – um, okay. <laughs> that sounds like a list you would come up with. <laughs> yeah. And get crafty if you have to. I think that's what you need to do. For the recess. <laughs> For the recess, especially. <laughs> Collect bugs. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I might have had a little help looking this up. But 
Maybe I was going to say. Bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, we got Dan Polly coming on the show, and he's going to come on after these words, Amber. So Dan Polly is going to come on. He's going to talk about all the things that I said he was going to talk about, but I'm going to introduce him after the commercial break. So we'll be right back after these words. Stick with us. Hey, will you count me down uh, before we go back live? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to say congratulations to my cousin Trinity for having her baby over the break since our last broadcast. Why didn't you say that for the radio? Because uh, I didn't know if you were going to ask me or not, and I wanted I to make sure. I, I sent because I seen Trinity log in, and I, I didn't forgot. want to disappoint her. Amber thought I was a while ago. <clears throat> she asked me if she could mention, and I said, "Yeah." I, I said no, but I was playing with her. Well, he likes to hit me like when I've already had other stuff going on. But I didn't know that because he doesn't. This is the first time we've spoke today. He doesn't respond to my text messages. I think I've seen him like nine text messages today. Ask anybody that knows me. I'm not anybody. Ask anybody that knows me. I'm horrible with texting back. I'm not anybody on the record now. Okay, I got Dan popping in. Should be right now here in a minute. Okay. What's up, Adam? There's my dude. What's up? <laughs> How you doing, brother? Hey, this is Amber. Amber, this Hi. is Dan. Nice to meet you, Amber. Nice to meet you. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, nice. I didn't know that you guys followed each other on Twitter. He has still yet to oh. accept my friend, like <laughs> my request on Twitter, even though I feel like he pressured me into getting a Twitter. <laughs> Changes the world, man. Here. I changed that now. So, mm. <laughs> hey, there is uh when you talk, there is like um like maybe a little distortion. Let me try moving the mic away. Yeah, I don't, does that help? What is that, Amber? Mm, it's like it's like you know when your microphone kind of almost comes unplugged a little bit, and you've got all that staticky sound. It's kind of like that. If anybody knows microphone trouble, it's me, Dan. So I'm patient. You, you go ahead. Does this sound any better? Uh, uh, uh-uh. that might mm. actually made it a little worse. Oh, fun. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. What about now? Say something. Testing one two. Mm. What it what it is is like when you're talking, it just sounds like that there's a I don't know what it is. It's like a distortion of some kind. Mm-hmm. I, I may not be able to use this microphone then. I might have to just use the one I've got on my MacBook here. Yeah, that might work actually better. It's an Apple product. Yeah, give me one second here. Yeah, try it out. Is uh, that sound? Say something. Testing one two. I don't know. It's probably it sounds kind of the same, but you know what? We'll maybe roll with it. maybe he can just rejoin. Yeah, let me rejoin with a different microphone. Sure. I got here. You like my shirt? 
Yeah, did you say the one I had on? I don't think you can really see it. This is, know. look. Boom. Joe Banks. Home alone. Oh, wow. <laughs> I do like that shirt, though. It's It's a chill shirt. All right. How's this sound? Hey, perfect. Much better. Okay, good. Glad perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go. Here we go. Three, two. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is <clears throat> joining me, as she always is, via Zoom at her house. I'm at mine. We are social distancing. This is House Arrest Series volume five as promised ladies and gentlemen i have dan Polly joining me also via zoom dan it's so nice to see you my man he is the host of friends in the corner podcast he's been doing the show for a couple years now and dan and i go way back all the way back to bc tc days we used to work together at a community yeah. college remember those days dan yeah man it feels like uh yesterday it it's does. been a while since we've um, <laughs> had those times together and i was thinking this might be one of the first times we've been together as post bctc employees yes it really has it's good to see you though man mm -hmm. like I, I know it's not in person but it's what i like about this zoom is i can actually look at your face it's really good to see a friendly face good to see a good friend yeah man absolutely a friend in the corner if you may be yeah if i may be so dan those who don't know about friends in the corner podcast and if you don't know about friends in the corner podcast i mean who are you anyway you should know about this show it's it's a great show tell us a little bit about it yeah so um i've been doing the show now for uh, almost two years um it's a show that is kentucky centric and we talk all things kentucky we interview people that do awesome stuff all around the state and then we also splice in a few other things as well that i find fun from bourbon reviews uh kentucky sports and all sorts of stuff so it's just a a, a podcast that shows my entire love session with the state of kentucky so um have had a background in podcasting i originally was a part of a uk sports podcast called bbn chalk talk with former uk football player max gobby i started that show with him a few months a few years ago after that season, I left that show, always had the idea of doing a show, and I really didn't have know where I wanted to go with it until, actually, Adam, I met you at BCTC, and we started talking about off the cuff. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, let me stop you right there for just a second. I, I was joking um, a little earlier in the show, Dan. I don't know if you were uh, listening, but I, I was saying that I don't know this to be a fact, but I think I played maybe a small, tiny role in the in you getting started with Friends in the Corner. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. okay. If you did, oh, I, damn, 100%. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when, I, when I was really getting started, my and when I started coming into BCTC, it was kind of when Adam was starting to exit out, but we talked a lot about podcasts, and I told him how I was a part of BB and Shock Talk, and then he told me about his show and I over the years until I started mine I kept up with off the cuff and it was one you of the did. first it was one of the uh shows that inspired me to start my own and Adam became one of my very first guests that I had on the show all those years ago I appreciate that too Dan that was a, a lot of fun and you just build such a good atmosphere a good energy a good vibe it truly is just a nice comfortable place to sit down and you built just a really good atmosphere for your guests to come in. And I think that's what you were trying to build. I know you have a lot of just eccentric people in Kentucky, a lot of interesting people you find interesting mm. in Kentucky. So I have to ask, you've had a lot besides me, because I know I'm, <laughs> your, I've, I've been your favorite. Who's, who's been your, um, I tell you what, I don't really want to ask who's been your favorite, but really not really your favorite, but who came on and just gave the best interview, man. That's a great question because I have done a, a lot of great interviews. Um, I've interviewed country singers. I've interviewed um, hip hop artists, YouTube content creators, pro wrestlers. As of a few weeks ago, I interviewed my first pro wrestler, Superior Tony Evans, out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Probably the one that I, for me personally, I know this sounds like a cop out answer. The one who gave the best interview 
uh, I have to believe is my fiance, uh, Catherine Watwood. Uh, when we got engaged last year, she right answer. On. Yeah, that was such a good answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. My, we did a how we got together type of interview together, and she she rocked it. So yeah, Dan, I listened to that. By the way, I did, and let me just say congratulations. Uh, I guess my I'm I'm looking for my invitation. <laughs> well, I, I've got it's... some I got some bad news for you. Hold uh, on, hold on for a second. I'm I'm looking for it still, Dan. I can't find it. <laughs> Oh, I got some bad news for you because due to the uh, COVID outbreaks, unfortunately, our wedding uh, has been canceled. So we're still going to get married this summer. Uh, we're kind of looking on the bright side of it all, but uh, things have unfortunately changed as, as most people's plans have them this uh, season. Yeah, I, I know you are one of the many people who've been affected by this, you and your fiance, but you two seem like you're so happy together. You're just rolling with the times. You're like, we still love each other. We'll get married whenever. That's mm. kind of how I look at you two. Yeah. And we say, hey, we got money back for a house now, I guess. So, Well, Dan, I know that you celebrated uh, just a couple weeks ago. Was it your 100th episode or was it your 50th? Uh, uh, I haven't quite gotten the 50th yet, but I'm getting there. Um, Gosh, why do I feel like that you have done a hundred episodes for? Because <laughs> it feels like it all this time I've been on here, but but it, I'm uh, I'm coming up on fifty, which is great because I didn't think I was going to make it past five. So it's it's awesome to kind of see that the show still has momentum going, and we're still going, and we're getting amazing people that can still come on the show. And Adam, I know you've been on four or five of the episodes yourself, so I'm hoping to have you on a few more. Oh, for Never. sure. I definitely would love to. Well, just a personal question, podcaster to podcaster, how, mm -hmm. what's really been some of your biggest hurdles as a host that you have to deal with? So I would say, and I've said this for a lot of content creators, I think is trying to budget your time to it. I talk to a lot of content creators who really get started with podcasting or YouTube, uh, YouTube videos or whatever. And they're super energized and they're super pumped for getting that show started. And then you get into five or six episodes and they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I think for me, it's been trying to get that momentum going to saying, Hey, I got to get these shows out. Even though maybe only two or three people listen to this show it's important to me to stick to this timetable to say, I got to get each and every one of these shows out. And by doing that, you keep going. And Adam, you know, some of the advice you gave me back in the day when I started was if you just keep putting episodes out, you're going to get to 200 episodes. You're going to get to 300 episodes. And that's kind of some advice that stuck with me to keep the show going, keep putting good shows out there and hope we hopefully keep growing from here. I think that the biggest thing people have to, remember is to just be consistent no matter what kind of mood you're in the show has to go on you have to keep putting out content and some people aren't built for that right. so dan you, you fit right in just with being a uh, a regular old broadcaster <laughs> but we got lots more with dan polly coming up we're going to take a quick break so stick with us we'll be right back Sorry, Dan. We got we got to take breaks, man. Oh no, I just understand. <laughs> Is this where you like splice in the commercial breaks? The yeah, the commercial. In? Yeah. So due to uh, this crap going on, uh, we have the we don't have the uh, ability from the station to go live, mm -hmm. like outside of the station, and let, we only have the ability to do live in the studio. So we have to do pre-records on Tuesday and the regular broadcast is on Thursday still. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, this is commercial time. <laughs> Fun. So, well, Amber, it's nice to finally meet you. I've been listening to you with uh, Adam over the last couple, over the last year or so. Well, yeah. I hope it's good things and not bad. I'm sorry. My uh, mouse will not work and it's <laughs> distressing me. Uh, I understand. Ooh. All right, Dan. Um, so I told you kind of what we're going to talk about, really. It's just real quick. Finkel, the Fink, and the Michael Jordan documentary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Let's finish this out. And it's flown by, man, so we're almost done.
Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Last segment of the hour. Amber Turner is here. Also joining us is Dan Pauly from Friends in the Corner podcast. He is joining us via Zoom. He is at his house, just like Amber is at her house and I'm at mine. This is House Arrest Series, Volume 5. We've been doing this series ever since this COVID-19 broke out here in Kentucky. We've been trying to keep our distance from one another. Uh, Dan, we were talking about your podcast and we were telling people uh, about some of your guests. You talk about a lot on that show. You talk about bourbon reviews, which is my personal favorite. And mm -hmm. I don't know really any other, I'm sure there are, but I don't know of many other podcasts that do that. So I think that's really cool and creative how you uh, have included that. And if there are podcasts that do that, which I'm sure there are, they've just not promoted it. So I don't know about it. You're the only one that I know that that I know that does a bourbon review podcast. Amber, name one bourbon review podcast. Uh, Friends in the Corner with Dan Polly. <laughs> besides, <you> go. <laughs> besides that one, can you name one? That's the only one we need to know. Well, my day job, I, I do work in bourbon. I work at a bourbon distillery, but okay. I don't know if my uh, show quite meets the uh, the man normal day to day with bourbon actually entails. Well. Dan, we have a lot in common. That's why we hit it off years ago. We both are big wrestling fans, and mm -hmm. we, as wrestling fans, Amber's a big wrestling fan too, so all of us here, uh, we just join in on the conversation. We lost a wrestling icon, um, Howard Finkel. He was the WWE ring announcer, and he was synonymous for all of these famous calls. I'm talking everything from Hulk Hogan to Stone Cold Steve Austin winning the WWF championship, you hear his voice. It was a big hit. Uh, do you have any Howard Finkel memories? You know, a, a lot of it's just from what I've gone back and watched. Howard Finkel was unfortunately a little bit before my time. But I mean, much like any legendary voice in wrestling, you have those that are kind of the staples for some of us. I'm sure Jim Ross is that way too. Um, I know for me, my childhood, when I think about my wrestling, uh, love Jim Ross was that guy. And oh, yeah. yeah, but for Fink, when you go back and listen to how he would pronounce Hulk Hogan, I'm doing the worst Fink impression ever. <laughs> that wasn't bad. <laughs> and the new, the following world contest world. Yeah. is scheduled for one fall. It is for the world wrestling federation yeah. championship. Yeah. Or my favorite was. The Undertaker, <laughs> or only one foot of Shawn Michaels touched the floor. Remember that one? Yeah, and I would say there. You know, when you go back and look at wrestling, at, when you look at people who made an impact outside of the ring, Howard Finkel is one of those guys. When in a probably a caveat of the wrestling industry, it's really hard to do, and just through his voice, he's one of those recognizable names you're going to constantly go back to the history tapes and you'll hear his voice yeah on it and so it's definitely a, a sad loss i know i listened to uh bruce pritchard some of the wrestle if podcast the other day and it sounds like he's very torn up about it too and i think for the wrestling industry that's a huge um loss for them it, so it is a huge loss because finkel was the longest working employee at the wwf he started there in he was the first announcer that they hired yeah. think about that and it, he was the first announcer that wwe officially hired when they became wwe or, or mm -hmm. when they became wwf when vince bought it from his father and he established titan sports howard was his first employee it was his first announcer so he's been the longest employee there so he's met and touched everybody that's come through those doors all of these years and you're right, you know, Jim Ross, of course, that would bother me too when Jim when Jim goes. When all of these guys go, it bothers me. And it's sad when all of these guys go. I'm going to be heartbroken when I lose <laughs> all of – every time I, I lose a wrestler, I get heartbroken. But um, Finkel was just one of those guys for me because of the memories, the nostalgia that he brings, the chill bumps that he would bring up and down your spine before announcing a major ma match in wrestling. Right. Absolutely. Well, I, I think uh, Tommy Dreamer, a uh, wrestler, um, I think 
made a little bit of a debut in the early 2000s in WWF. Um, I actually was visiting Finkel a lot, and there was a little sign posted in the back of one of the last pictures he posted, and it was his medical notes, and it said, please turn the television to WWE Wrestling at 8 Central Time, and they're like, even when he wasn't here, he was still here, and I was like, that is that, that pretty much sums up the Finkel for me. People have been giving the Fink some love. They have taken to Twitter and to other social media pages. Vince McMahon, the CEO of the WWE, said the grandest moments in sports entertainment history were made all the grander thanks to Howard's iconic voice. Triple H, whose first title win in WWE, which was the Intercontinental Championship in 1996, was announced by Finkel, and he said, you weren't someone until you heard Howard announce you. So I thought that was pretty big, too. He died on April the 16th at the age of 69, and he had been unwell since a stroke that he apparently had back in February. So we lost the fink. But, and speaking of wrestling, Dan, what do you think about them being essential? Did you hear about yeah, that? I, I did. Uh, very interesting Um I, I'm not complaining too much because if anything, and I was talking about this on a previous podcast of my own, wrestling has helped us to get a little break from everything else going on. So more power to them that they can get that type of, uh, I guess you could call it clearance to do that. So I'm still tuning into WWE. I'm still tuning into AEW to catch up for everything because there's not a whole lot of else on to watch right now. No. I guess being friends with the president has its perks. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. <laughs> All right. Before we go, Dan, I have to talk to you about the Michael Jordan documentary. Michael Jordan, to me, is the GOAT. He is the greatest of all time and the greatest person to ever pick up a basketball. Now, I'm not taking away anything from Kobe Bryant or LeBron James. I'm not taking away anything from those guys, but Michael Jordan was just on a different level. The aura that Michael Jordan had, that mystique, just the number 23, he was a sight to see. And he has, in, he has ingrained himself into our pop culture, his brand, his image, he has. I got to ask, Dan, are you a Michael Jordan fan? I, I am from a historical standpoint. I can't tell you I'm 29 right uh as of a few as the last month so i can't really recall too much of watching jordan growing up but much, much like kobe and we've talked about kobe on my show before adam um you hear about the legacy and the lore of jordan and going back to watch the documentary it kind of re re re-acknowledged that that how great he actually was i like the fact that it touched on a couple things one a lot of times people like to say, oh, Michael Jordan couldn't win it without Scottie Pippen. Episode two really touched on that, how Jordan played a lot of the 90, was it the 97 season without Pippen and still was winning. Uh, so I was glad that they touched on that. Uh, I didn't realize either that, that Michael Jordan was injured for a short period of time. I thought he went his entire career with his second season, he was injured with his foot and they limited his minutes mm -hmm. I, so. I thought i thought that was kind of interesting too to watch that and i i literally just finished watching both uh the first two episodes an hour ago but um it was interesting to see because you wanted to see how badly he wanted to play and i mean you hear the legendary story about how he played through the flu yeah and he and i i think that's what i loved more than anything watching this entire show is no matter what he did, he wanted to prove he was the best in that basketball court. He was so competitive on a level, I think, that surpassed any other player even today. Um, he wanted to play past those seven minutes they limited him to. He wanted to play past the flu. He wanted to solidify himself as, as the GOAT. And this new generation is getting introduced to him. I think about these kids that were maybe watching that documentary the other night for the first time. They, they're seeing Jordan for the first time. Wonder what they thought when they see that. Because like I said, he's a sight to see. And what I mean, what I mean by a sight to see is, you know, those people that just mesmerize you when you look at them, the way Jordan would float and move as he played the game. I talked to a guy one time 
he was from Chicago and he had season tickets in the nineties. And he said it was a whole nother thing watching Jordan play live. He said he was good on TV. He said, but there was nothing like watching him live. The way he would move was unlike anything he'd ever seen. So this new generation, I'm so glad that they're finally getting an intro to who Michael Jordan is. Well, and you think because there, there probably has been such a gap between when Jordan finally retired and now. I mean, that's a whole generation of people who did grow up with LeBron James. And, and for me, since I lived through the LeBron James era, I do consider LeBron James to be the best basketball player of all time. But mm-hmm. if I was able to see Jordan in his prime, my consideration may be different. And so, yeah, you're being reintroduced to this uh, player. Like I, that's how I felt when I watched the first time, the Bo Jackson documentary, I obviously didn't let, see Bo Jackson, his prime, but going back, you're like, who was this guy? Who, like, how is he this great? And I think a lot for a new generation, they get to relive how great this guy actually was. Yeah. Amber. Hmm? What about you? Are you a Michael Jordan fan? Well, you know, I, I usually set out when you guys talk sports, but I, I like Michael Jordan in Space Jam. That was a good, yes. that was a great movie. Top 10 movie. Dan, you, you and Catherine's got to show you babies that. The Space movie. Jam? Yeah. Space Jam. Oh, we, we have it on DVD. Be ready to go. Hey, so have you rescheduled the wedding? Is that coming like any time? Do you know the date yet? So what we've kind of decided is um, – as of now, with everything happening, we what we're kind of going to be going with is in June when our wedding was supposed to be, we're going to elope, and then we're going to have a small ceremony back in my hometown of Dayton, Ohio, next year, and that's we're just going to call it that is. We spent the last year kind of really prepping and preparing for this wedding, and it's kind of sad to see where it's gone, but we, at the end of the day, want to just do what we think is best for both of us, and we at the it's not about the pomp and circumstance of the way it's about us really tying each other tying ourselves to each other so we're gonna elope this june we have a nice apartment lined up for ourselves in versailles kentucky and we're gonna rock and roll from there well i wish you all the best dan before i let you go tell everybody where they can listen to friends in the corner podcast and how they can follow you on social media absolutely so um we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud. If you want to search for us there, Friends in the Corner Podcast. If you want to follow us on social media, you can follow us on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at FITC Podcast. We also have a Patreon page for anyone that wants to support us at patreon.com slash FITC Podcast. And if anyone wants to email the show, email friendsinthecorner at gmail.com. That's friends in the corner altogether lowercase at gmail.com. Dan, always a pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Adam. And uh, Amber, finally nice to meet you. Hopefully, Nice I, to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. That was Dan Polly, ladies and gentlemen, with Friends in the Corner podcast. You need to check out his podcast. It's pretty good. Amber, hmm? it's always a pleasure. Well, be, I miss here. you. I do, too. It's been too long. I can't wait to just touch that face again. Well. All over. Would you be <laughs> mad? Are you going to be one of those people that get mad? when i touch because i'm a touchy person no i'm I'm probably gonna embrace it i hope that more people are like that all right ladies and gentlemen big special thanks to dan polly for joining us you can follow off the cuff on facebook at off the cuff with adam banks or you can follow the co-host amber turner on insta or snap at ambu447 and twitter And Twitter at Ambu447. Excuse me. She's joined the Twitter world. Or you can join, join, follow (laughs) your boy, the host of Off the Cuff, Adam Banks, at the Adam Banks on Twitter and Instagram. And I think I made that my Facebook handle too. I'll have to double check. But the Adam Banks. I think you did. Yeah. So Facebook, Twitter, and Insta, the Adam Banks, one handle. Follow Off the Cuff at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. That is Ember Turner. I'm Off the Cuff. (laughs) <laughs> okay can we just start over <laughs> this is but this is driving me stir crazy that is ember turner i'm adam banks and this is off the cuff we'll see you next thursday from four to five we'll catch you down the road all right thank everybody for joining us again and we will see you next week